All right, so next I want to show you how easy it is to layer and split the keyboard on the Vivo series. When you turn the instrument on, you will find that the entire instrument is set up as one sound all the way down the keyboard. However, when we touch this button right here, we have now layered two different sounds onto the keyboard. So when I play, I'm getting both the pop grand sound and the dark pad. It's easy to switch one of these sounds out. I simply move the underline to the sound I want to change, step through till I find just the sound I want, something like that, perhaps, or changing this one out. And I can select any two sounds to have across the entire range of the keyboard. By pressing this button, I can split the keyboard into two separate sounds. Now, my top sound is going to be piano. My bottom sound is acoustic bass and ride. I can also press both of these buttons at once. Doing so enters four hands mode. Four hands mode is a really cool thing if you happen to be someone who teaches younger beginner students in class situations. Four hands mode gives me essentially two separate smaller digital pianos. So I have middle C right here, but I also have another middle C up here so that two students can work independently on one instrument. What's great about this mode is Dexabell has really thought this out. The uh, headphone jacks in this mode will actually operate as two independent headphone jacks, one which puts out only this part of the keyboard and one that only puts out the higher portion of the keyboard. You can even change the damper pedal and the unicorda pedal so that they will both function like damper pedals so that each half of the piano has its own independent damper pedal. Pretty cool stuff. Next, I want to take some time to walk you through some of the parameters of Dexabell's great T2L system. T2L stands for true to life. It's how they really achieve that lifelike sound from all of their piano sounds. So the T2L settings are accessed through the OLED display and by one single button press, I can now enter a menu which allows me to select the sound, the amount of hammer noise I'm going to get, the key off noise, and um, string resonance, damper resonance, and damper noise. Kind of cool stuff like that. So I have those six parameters that I can edit. They haven't given you control over every single possible parameter, but they've given you control over all of the musically useful ones. And this ability to balance out the amount of control versus complexity has been done really, really well in this instrument. No one wants to have to feel like they have to have an audio engineering degree to run a digital piano. And Dexabell have given us access to just all of the right stuff here. So using the Vivo Grand setting, I'm going to demonstrate how we can edit some of these parameters. First of all, we can change the amount of hammer noise. This is with a nominal amount of noise. And by holding down the button, I can increase it all the way up to a value of 63. You can really hear that woody knocking sort of sound with the hammer noise increased all the way. I can also reduce it by the same amount, so there's no hammer noise whatsoever. I'll restore it to the nominal amount here of a setting of zero. We can also increase key off noise. So as I increase this, you will be able to hear it. Again, reducing it to the nominal amount. And I can eliminate it entirely by turning it down from the nominal amount. I personally think it kind of adds a lot to the realism, having a little bit of that key noise and release noise in there. We can also adjust the amount of damper noise that we have. So as I push down the damper pedal, I'll turn this up all the way so you can really hear it. You
you can hear that. What I think is really cool, something I haven't seen elsewhere before, is when I jam the damper pedal down really hard, it makes more sound than when I press it gently. So I think that's kind of a cool thing. You can, once again, completely eliminate that sound if you would prefer. Um, you're also allowed to change the amount of string resonance. So that is what I demonstrated earlier on when we play some keys silently. And we get that sympathetic resonance. So I can increase that if I wanted to, to really bring that effect out. So now, it's very pronounced. If I play with it turned up that much, It's almost like there's a pad playing, like there's a layered sound, even though, of course, there isn't. And I can completely eliminate that, if I wish to, by turning it down all the way. I'm demonstrating only the extreme settings because it's easier to hear what each of these things does. In practice, of course, you'd probably want to have it somewhere in between there, kind of um, tempered to taste. really loses something without that physical modeling resonance in there. I think it's a really cool thing. We can also change the amount of damper resonance that we see here. So again, here's with the nominal amount. As I increase that to the maximum amount, you can hear it makes a big difference when I apply the damper pedal. stuff. And I'll return that to its nominal amount. Now, you can change these T2L settings not just for the acoustic piano sounds, but the other sounds as well. So, for example, if I bring up a harpsichord sound, it's going to give me control over the noise of the jack return. If I bring up an, a, a um, Rhodes piano type sound, it's going to give me control over the tine noise that's going to come up. So the parameters kind of get tailored to each of the sounds that you bring up. Some of the sounds do not have T2L parameters because they are strictly samples. Sounds like this would include the guitar sounds, uh, some of the mallet percussion sounds, and some of the pad sounds don't offer us uh, some of those additional physical modeling parameters. However, something else that is offered on all of the sounds is the ability to shape the volume envelope for that sound. The volume envelope is how the time, how the volume changes over time, and that's controlled through five parameters. Attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. So attack is the amount of time the sound takes to get to its highest volume point. Hold is the amount of time it holds at that point. And the decay is the amount of time it takes to decay to a nominal volume. Sustain is the volume at which the sound will sustain while you're holding the key. And release is the amount of time it takes the sound to go away. So using this poly brass sound as an example, Listen to what happens as I change each of these parameters. So here I'm going to change the attack of the sound, the amount of time it takes to get to its highest volume. We'll start out at the nominal volume. As I increase it, you'll hear it takes just a moment to ramp up to that highest volume. I can also change the hold time. So as I increase it to the maximum amount, it holds at that highest volume for a little while longer than it would otherwise. I'll turn that back down. I can also increase the decay time, the amount of time it takes to come down to that sustain level. So here's our nominal level. and I'll gradually increase it. And you can hear it really holds at that highest level a little bit longer than it would have otherwise before I increased it.
we can also increase or decrease the sustain level. Now the sustain level is already pretty high on this particular sound, so we're probably able to hear the effect best if I decrease it from where it is. So here is our nominal sustain level. And now if I decrease it, you're hearing that it sustains at a lower volume. Of course, the release is the amount of time that the sound will linger after I let up the key. So by increasing my release time, I go from to sounds that are more like this. It sounds that take a lot longer to kind of fade out. So it really allows you a nice opportunity to customize the sounds to your liking and really make them your own. The other thing that's cool about this is once you have your sounds customized, Dexable has provided a nice couple of spots to be able to easily save your setups so that you can easily recall them at the touch of a button.